So I arrived on scene this morning, and um, right now we're, we're doing the, the on-scene documentation and, and, and uh, on-scene examination that we can, can do while it's, while it's here on the airport. Um, we've, we've basically completed that, and we have a recovery crew that is in place right now uh, to uh, take the airplane to another facility and uh, once it gets to that other facility, we'll, we'll go there to do um, further examination, more comprehensive and thorough examination of the airplane. We're also going to uh, remove the engine and uh, have it shipped to a facility where the engine can be examined. In this case, the, uh, the indications that we have, uh, we, we don't have um, indications one way or another uh, whether the engine was or was not producing power. So we want to do an internal examination of the engine uh, to help us determine that. Um, due to the uh, amount of destruction to the airplane the, and, and the post-crash fire, um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the components have burned up. So um, we're not sure uh, that the airplane did not have a black box uh, or a flight data recorder. And so, uh, but it did have avionics that are potentially could record, but because of the amount of damage, we're not sure if we'll be able to recover any of the data from those devices. So right now we're, we're kind of wrapping up our on-scene uh, portion of the investigation. We're going to do follow-up investigation once it gets to the other facility and, uh, and, and just, uh, you know, keep going from there. NTSB, we don't release the names um, of, of the pilot or any, any of that kind of information, but I can tell you that the, the pilot, he had a private pilot certificate with an airplane single engine land rating and an instrument rating. Um, I have not had a chance uh, to um, go further into his background than that. Uh, that's that's uh, something that will be done in the coming months, uh, looking, at, looking at his background. In a, in a fatal accident like this, we always, uh, always get um, autopsy and toxicology reports on the pilot, so we'll have to wait for those reports. Uh, we'll be gathering um, information on the pilot's um, experience, training, his background, things like that. that but that'll, that'll all be coming, uh, coming up uh, in the future. Once it's moved to the other facility, uh, we'll be looking at the wreckage to see if we can go through the control system, uh, for example, and see if we can find any um, anything in the control system that, that uh, doesn't look right. Um, we don't have any indications right now that, the, that, that there are any problems, but we always go through those systems to see what they show us. Um, I, again, I, we don't release where the pilot's from, but, the, but this flight, the flight plan that he filed, was to depart John, the Johnson County Executive Airport here and fly to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, it, the, uh, uh, the information we have right now is that he had brought the airplane uh, to Johnson County Executive on a previous date to get uh, uh, the airplane's annual inspection uh, completed. Um, all airplanes are required to go undergo a, a, uh, an inspection at least annually uh, to determine their condition and can, uh, determine if they're safe for flight. So uh, he brought the airplane to this airport for that purpose and uh, was, uh, that had been completed and uh, he was departing for that. We, we do have the, the maintenance records for that inspection and we're, uh, but I haven't had a chance to examine those to see what work was performed and what, it, it, what if any discrepancies were found during the inspection.